Brazil is a unique case in terms of the fact it has much more alarming inflation situation than almost any other emerging market country. That's according to some experts, but joining me down the line to discuss his outlook for the Brazilian economy and its currency is Eamon Agdassi, market strategist with Societe Generale. So Eamon, the central banks say it will rely on interest rate increases instead of propping up the currency to control inflation. Do you think this is the best route? I do, but I think there's an important distinction here. One is uh, what the central bank should do, uh, which is, I think, the, the crux of your question. But the second thing, which probably matters more, is what the central bank is likely to do over the coming meetings. Uh, most economists that you speak to uh, who cover Brazil, either based on shore or offshore, believe that in order to really rein in inflation, not just in the near term, but over the long term to get inflation towards that 4.5%, a center of the central bank's target band uh, for IP scan inflation, you really need to have much more aggressive monetary pri- uh, policy than, than what people are, are pricing in right now. So most people say something in the range of 150 or 200 basis points in, in hikes, uh, which uh, w- which is probably much more aggressive than, than, than what people are actually expecting uh, the, the coupon to do. I think the reason why uh, I personally, at least, am uh, very hesitant to buy into the notion of a very aggressive monetary tightening cycle in Brazil is that uh, there's there's quite a lot of, of kind of political considerations that I think the central bank has to be sensitive to. This is a central bank which, which as we know, is, is very well connected to the government, uh, has to, um, you know, I would say tread lightly in terms of uh, whether or not it conducts monetary policy solely independently it has to, uh, you know, make some political concessions and some considerations and, and kind of manage its uh, its policy in that direction. In the current environment, I think uh, you're in a situation where Brazil clearly wants to control inflation and make sure inflation doesn't uh, rise uh, very sharply and get kind of out of control. But you're also in a situation where uh, the government would really like uh, growth to remain intact, especially on the domestic uh, demand side of things, things like rising wages, low unemployment, um, good consumer confidence. Those things really underlie uh, the government's uh, source of popularity, especially if you go into late 2014 when you're looking at the uh, presidential elections. I don't think the government really wants to sacrifice that, and that's exactly, I think, what would happen if you had a very aggressive monetary tightening cycle. So our base case expectation is actually that the high 25 basis points would be the second consecutive 25 basis point uh, Sally hike later this month, and then the, mon- the monetary policy tightening cycle, if you will, will be finished. Uh, that's a much more uh, dovish expectation than what the markets are pricing in or what most analysts believe is going to happen. You mentioned the relationship between the government and the central bank. After efforts to jumpstart the economy last year failed to gain much traction, the Brazilian government is taking more measures to fuel investment, mainly in infrastructure areas, and has also moved to cut taxes. How effective will this be moving forward, do you think? Uh, some of the things that you mentioned along uh, the lines of infrastructure investment and other sorts of uh, stimulative measures I think are, are useful in terms of stimulating short-term growth. Uh, the, the tax cut measures, I think, are, have a dual purpose. They're not only to uh, provide some um, sort of stimulus to growth, but also to rein in inflation in the sense that you lower taxes and kind of the bottom line of inflation uh, it, it is, is under control, even if underlying pressures of inflation, things that relate to uh, demand and, 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 and kind of those underlying smoldering pressures are still in existence. Um, I, I don't think these really solve the long-term problem for Brazil. You have a kind of bigger uh, fish to fry, if you will. The, the, as far as I understand, the, the big things for Brazil to be concerned about in terms of growth structurally, uh, first and foremost, I think, in the near term, have to do with global business cycle, if you will. Essentially, demand for emerging market exports is certainly just not as strong as it used to be. Uh, certainly not as strong as we saw before the 2008-2009 crisis. And... Uh, really not as strong as you saw in, in 2010, early 2011. So we're in a situation in which essentially every emerging market country's exports are under pressure, and that's really weighing on growth, not only in Brazil, but other young countries. But Brazil also has uh, issues, I think, related to competitiveness in global markets as well. You saw in 2010, 2011, 
a period of time where unit labor costs were rising fairly sharply. Uh, those are not rising uh, like they used to, mostly because the currency has depreciated. Uh, but you are in a situation, I think, where something has to give here for Brazil in order to regain some competitiveness. Either you need a rise in productivity, probably fueled by investment, you need a depreciation in the currency, something else to really ignite uh, competitiveness in the economy. And I think, uh, lastly, I think the thing that, that Brazil probably needs to deal with from the growth side over time is to kind of regain some of its uh, investor profile in terms of the, the confidence of international investors in the economy that, that may have been lost in that period of time between 2010 uh, maybe to the end of 2012, you had a, you know, for instance, the introduction of the IOF tax, which is essentially a tax on foreign inflows into fixed income. Uh, you had uh, all sorts of manipulations of the currency. Uh, these things, I think, uh, you know, when you throw in things like protectionism and other sorts of manipulations of, uh, of uh, trade barriers, um, I think in the eyes of a lot of international investors, a little bit on the margin at least dampened uh, some of uh, Brazil's strength in terms of its investor profile internationally. Those are the things I think that are the real kind of um, big dominoes to fall, if you will, for Brazil to regain some of its uh, kind of growth momentum in the long term. Brazil's economic activity posted a slight expansion in March, increasing expectation that Latin America's biggest economy will post tepid activity in the first quarter of this year. Your expertise are more in fixed income. In terms of investment, are there still opportunities and if so, where? Well, you know what, my principal area of focus is the currency and the rates markets, so the fixed income markets. So I, I won't go into depth on the equity markets. I'll probably leave that for uh, for another uh, individual to comment on who, who probably follows the equity markets better than I do. There's obviously huge pressure on the equity markets. Uh, the Bovespa is down uh, about 12.5% year to date. Uh, but whether or not there's there's value in equities, I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll leave that to, to, the, to the next person you can bring on to talk a little bit more um, uh, with a little bit more authority there. Uh, in terms of fixed income in the currency, I really continue to see a lot of value in the front end of the yield curve uh, for those individuals that w are willing to receive rates or, or buy the bonds. Uh, currently, our recommendation here at, at Societe Generale is to receive the Jan 15's pre-DI swap. The basis of that argument is that you still have uh, quite a bit of very hawkish expectations uh, for monetary policy in terms of what the coupon will do uh, w regarding some sort of uh, very aggressive uh, monetary hiking cycle. We just don't think it's likely to materialize. So probably our, our best uh, recommendation would be to stick to the front end of the yield curve. The long end of the yield curve uh, is a little bit more precarious in our view, the reason being that given these kind of long-term questions around inflation management and some questions around fiscal management as well, the long term can behave very erratically, especially if you head towards a situation where we're at risk of the Fed gradually easing away from uh, quantitative easing and uh, causing a, a steepening of the, the US Treasury curve. Policymakers have switched over the past few months between selling currency swaps to prevent the real from falling too much and offering reverse swaps to protect exporters from refining in gains. The measures have kept the real in the range of 1.95 to 2.05 per dollar this year. But what is your outlook for the currency? Uh, on the currency, I think tactically there's value. We're currently recommending to be short dollars, long reais but more with a short-term view. So we got in at around 204, the currency's trading around 203.50. And uh, the reason why we have that view is because we think the current policy, or the recent policy, I should say, of exchange rate management, essentially trying to hold uh, the exchange rate against the dollar close to the two level will probably stay intact over the near term. Essentially what we believe is, is the current, the, the, the central bank and the government are playing a very delicate game here, trying to keep the currency at that level to balance uh, the risk of a very depreciated currency spilling over into higher inflation, and on the other hand, a very appreciated currency uh, sacrificing some of the competitiveness of the industrial sector. So in our view, uh, the upside in the currency in terms of uh, dollar Brazil rising are relatively contained here because we believe that if the currency rises very sharply, uh, meaning a depreciation in the real, the, the BCB would be likely to step in there and, and sell dollars once again. Well, that's all from Eamon and myself. For all of today's programmes, please do click back to Ducoscopy TV. Goodbye for now.